a journey through the desert. What took more but the sun? Two, when does Kisuka ruin a China Jeremiah, Niger, a quote, tell you to the Akaka? Later that afternoon, I see for myself on the outskirts of Agadez how little the government cares. Completely overloaded trucks and pickup trucks set out for the journey through the desert. This is the much talked about Monday's convoy. With some supplies for the journey, I joined the convoy. Several rare sites lay on my path, like this herd of camels. Before the advent of trucks, these even towed ungulates were the only means of journeying through the desert. After about 18 hours of a bumpy ride, we pulled out. We have been warned against going the distance, especially through the bandits' territory. At this stop, each truck driver makes final checks on his vehicle and passengers. 
About 30 migrants make this journey cramped in one pickup truck. Each one of them clinging desperately to a stick attached to the body of the truck. To prevent them from falling off during the bumpy ride. Many young men in Agadez have taken to driving migrants across the Sahara Desert because of the proceeds. I am told that drivers make the cost of their vehicles after just a few okay. successful trips. About 2,000 migrants make this journey through the desert every week. But how many actually arrive the Mediterranean and cross into Europe? Florence, capital and center of Tuscany, a region in central Italy. Called Firenze by the locals, it is one of seven Tuscan localities designated World Heritage Sites. Florence is visited annually by close to 2 million tourists. Popular in the city are African stores. Most of them owned and run by Nigerian women. Many girls are promised jobs in these stores before leaving Nigeria, but they arrive Italy to face the reality. During the day, the beautiful landscape and architecture in Florence catches one's fancy. But at night, this historic Italian city has a different side entirely. Young Nigerian women prostitutes themselves on streets across the city, most of them victims of trafficking. We comb the streets accompanied by Lisa Bettini, 
a local social worker. If she uh, thinks about the fact that the girls are even getting younger from Nigeria. Lisa shares her experience with some of the girls. This type of prostitution on the roads began back in the 90s, but the girls were mainly from Albania and Eastern Europe. Since the year 2000, the numbers have changed, and Nigerian girls have become the most important group. Lately, the number of Nigerian girls who work as prostitutes in Greater Florence has risen extremely. They all come through Libya, across the Mediterranean, and they're getting younger. Of course, the girls are afraid of their madams. The madams are Nigerians with official Italian documents. This keeps them from getting into trouble with the police. The girls will not go to the police to report any maltreatment by the madams because they come here with one goal, to secure their future and send money back home to their families. The girls tell us that 8 out of 10 clients ask for sex without condoms and they usually don't have a choice because they want the money. I hope that your investigation helps to spread the knowledge about what's going on because it's important that we talk about trafficking, prostitution and exploitation. In Italy, we try not to talk about these. We pretend there isn't a problem until there is a crisis. In commercial areas outside the city, the full extent is clear. More than 40,000 foreigners illegally walk as prostitutes on streets across Italy. Reports say many of them are from Nigeria, all of them working for the so-called madams. <laughs> in Nigeria, I can't do prostitution. Why? My, oh, they will kill me. My mom will, will just son me. If you know, it help. He will not cut me again. He said, from today, I'm not your mother anymore. Yeah, you know that I'm in charge, but I tell him that I'm working in a very big company. <laughs> <laughs> 